Hey everyone, Mike Hidalgo here and thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today we're going to be working on our 2008 Porsche Cayenne Turbo. Today we're going to be showing you how to replace the rear brakes on this Cayenne Turbo behind us. This DIY is going to be applicable to all 955 and 957 SUVs. Uh, the only thing you may have is a little bit different caliper, however the process is going to be the same and those years range from 2003 all the way to 2010. Today we're going to be working with our Zimmerman zinc coated rotors and we're going to be using a set of Pagod pads as well as some new hardware and a new brake pad wear sensor. A couple reasons you may want to look into this. As you may or may not know, this SUV is a pretty heavy rig, so over time the brakes on it are going to fade just like any vehicle. However, now you have a vehicle with a 4.8 V8 twin turbo plus 5,000 pounds, they're going to go sooner than later. This is all going to be dependent on how you drive at the end of the day. Brakes can last you anywhere from 10,000 all the way to 50,000 miles. On this SUV, we have no service history of it. We don't know when the last time they were done, and frankly, just by looking at them, you can tell they're bad. Another thing you can do if you're checking your own vehicle is run your fingernail on the tip of the rotor. If you have a heavy lip on either end, then it's safe to say that your rotors are shot. You can always do a visual inspection on the pads to see how much thickness is left on them. Now that we have a look at the parts that we're going to be working with today, let's take a look at the tools that we're going to need for this DIY. Overall, pretty basic tools. We have a couple different ratchets and extensions and adapters. Most importantly though, you're going to need a tool to retract your pistons as well as the M16 triple square so you can get those caliper carry bolts off in addition to a couple fly heads, extensions, caliper hooks if you have them, and then some nice to haves are always a set of electric tools. Now that we have a look at the tools we're going to be needing, let's head over to the car and get started. Now before we get started, because our Cayenne is equipped with air suspension, we're going to go ahead and put it into jack mode so that we don't damage the air suspension system. So let's go ahead and do that first. So first we're going to go ahead and turn on the ignition. We're not going to, we don't have to turn it on for this. And then once you do that, you're going to hold your suspension height button forward for about five seconds. And on the dash, you're going to see a message saying safe to jack or in jack mode. Before we go ahead and jack up the Cayenne, we're going to go ahead and undo the cap on our brake reservoir. That way it allows the system to depressurize as we compress our pistons back in. And we can put a towel on there to catch any spillage. Or you can go ahead and syringe some of it out. With our two retaining clips removed and our cowl piece off, we can go ahead and unplug the sensor from the cap. Set that to the side and now we can undo our cap. That's simply it. You don't have to pull it off. If you want to, you can and remove some fluid. However, this is getting flushed anyway, so it's not that full to begin with. We'll just set that to the side. Now let's get ready to lift up the Cayenne. Now that we have our Cayenne put into jack mode, we can go ahead and work on getting our wheels off. Again, if you're working on the ground, just be sure you're using a jack stand, floor jack, be safe. To get our wheel off, we're gonna need five lugs removed. Those are 19 millimeters. There goes my hernia. Now with this off, you can go ahead and take a look at the brakes. You can see ours are pretty shot. These have a pretty significant lip on them, both on the outboard and inboard. So not terrible, but definitely in need of replacing. From here, our next move is gonna be to disconnect our brake pad wear sensor. You can start by disconnecting the connector over here. Usually if these are not too rusted in place, you can press the tab in, which is right here, and then Pull these out. That is the first time this has happened for me. With that removed, you can then go ahead and pull it off the caliper. This has a little notch here where the cable keys through. And then since we're replacing it and we're replacing the pads, we're just going to go ahead and yank this out. But if you're going to be reusing it, which I suggest you don't, you're going to want to be a little bit more careful. There's one. It's got a little guide clip here. There we go. Now with our wear pad sensor removed, our next step is to remove the two caliper carrier bolts. You're going to need a triple square M16 socket for that. So I'm going to start with this top one first. Make sure that socket is all the way in. You don't want to strip these. I'm going to use a half inch breaker bar to try to break these free first. With that one broken free, we can go ahead and break loose our bottom one as well. And for that one, you're going to want to feed your tools through this triangle cutout in the lower control arm. It's basically designed to allow you to insert your tool through here and have some room to work with. 
However, you're going to need an extension depending on the size of your socket. So I'm using a inch extension. Now you want to note before removing the carrier bolts, there is a bracket depending on how your vehicle is equipped. That's held on by a 10 millimeter nut. You want to go ahead and remove it so that you can free up a little bit of this hard line as well as where the wear pad sensor goes so you can remove that caliper carrier bolt. And that's just going to be a 10 millimeter if your vehicle has it. And then from here, I'm just going to put on an electric ratchet just to speed up the removal, however, not necessary. And now with that 10 millimeter removed, you should have enough playroom in this bracket so that you can go ahead and pull out this upper caliper carrier bolt. Again, not mandatory, but it's easier to work with it being free. Now that we have our two carrier bolts removed and our wear pad sensor off, we can go ahead and pull this caliper out. So it should just pull off to the side. And you can either rest it on this upper control arm or get yourself some hooks. I'm going to have both just as a precaution in case it was to fall off. So. one, maybe we'll do two. Again, these aren't doing anything right now, but should it fall, hopefully they should slow it down. Now we have that off to the side, we can work on getting this rotor off. Now to get this rotor set screw off, you're gonna need a Torx bit. This is gonna be a T50. And what I like to do with these cars that are originally from New England or rusty and crusty, I like to take the socket, put it into place, and then shock it with a hammer, giving it a couple taps, just so we reduce the risk of stripping that. And if we're lucky, it'll break free. You may need to counter hold your rotor. Boom, baby. Now in a perfect world, this rotor would just come off but it's not a perfect world. What you're seeing here is we're fighting the inside drums, uh, the parking brake shoe drums, shoes, whatever you want to call them. Obviously you want to make sure those are not engaged when you're working on this. There we go, baby. Crusty, big lip, English, me learn. Now with the Rotor removed, we can go ahead and clean up this hub a little bit. I'm going to use this wire brush. You can use sandpaper, emery cloth, or a wire wheel, and then any any seize of your liking so that your new rotor doesn't seize on here for the future. Now I have my hub cleaned up decently. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of brake clean, just spray everything off, let it dry, and then we'll hit it with some anti seize. With our hub cleaned up, I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid molly ceramic paste around the area where the rotor is gonna sit on. That way, hopefully in the future, when they go to do the brakes on this again, they're not seized on. You saw the other side, you saw that one took a little bit more of encouragement. My friend JR showed me how to do this. Bob Ross of ceramic paste. Good enough. Now before we reinstall our new rotor, we're gonna take advantage of the room that we have and work on compressing the pistons in our caliper. What I like to do is normally I use a normal piston retractor tool. If I have to, I'll use a C-clamp. However, these Cayenne rotors on the front and back are pretty narrow, so I can't get my standard tool in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off one pad at a time and leave one in. And then I'm gonna use one of those quick grip, uh, like plastic uh, vices to try to compress the pistons in and see how that goes. So I'm gonna start with removing the inboard pad. I'm just going to set this to the side for now. I'm going to grab my little plastic vise. Get it into place. Let's see if that's enough to press these in. And again, it's a little bit easier if you remove the cap on the master cylinder like we did. That way you A, don't avoid overpressurizing the system and B, it allows the pistons to go in easier. So that one's pretty much all the way in. This was a good trick, so now I'm going to remove this put the old pad back on the inboard side and repeat the process. So I'm gonna remove this pad so we have some clearance. And then I'm gonna put my old pad back in. 
and pick it up. Try to weasel this in here somehow. And that should do us. Let's take this pad off and see what the pistons look like. Beautiful. With that removed, we're gonna go ahead and replace this clip inside of here that gives the uh, pads tension so they're not rattling all over the place. You can reuse these. I could go ahead and put in our new pads. However, we have a new one. They're pretty easy to change. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver and simply pry it off from the caliper body. Just careful not to damage your seals as you're removing it. And then I like to go ahead and take a little bit of time to clean up this area. So what I'm gonna do is take the wire brush and just slightly clean up these guide pins. We'll hit it with some brake clean and then we'll reassemble everything. Now that we have pressed the pistons back into the caliper, before we go ahead and assemble stuff, I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of brake clean. You can tell these have not been cleaned in a long time. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this metal clip. This is a one that gives the pads a little bit of tension so they don't rattle inside the caliper. These can be a little bit of a bear to put on, so you might wanna use your fingers with a combination of a flathead, depending on how you get it started. So what you saw me do there is I used a flathead and I pressed it against the center of the clip and then I gave it a good bop with my hand and that gave it enough bend in here to push back in and then open back up inside the copper so that it won't fall out. Now we're ready to reinstall our new pads. You're gonna set them into place. And then you wanna push down on them to compress that clip a little bit, just like that. These guide pins are there to allow the pads to key themselves into place so they don't move around. Same thing with the inboard pad, we're gonna line it up. push on it and guide it over these posts. Voila. And I put my hook back on and we can reinstall our rotor. Now we're ready to reinstall our new rotors. As you can see, I took my gloves off. Not that my hands are super clean, but whenever you're handling these Zimmerman rotors, they are zinc coated. And you wanna avoid trying to hit them with brake clean. So you wanna make sure your hands are as clean as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted and get our set screw started. Again, you're gonna need a T50 for these set screws. I'm gonna snug this one in by hand, but you can torque these down anywhere from 10 to 12 foot pounds. Beautiful. With our rotor in place and our set screw on, we can go ahead and mount our caliper back into place. You always wanna note that you're not putting any stress on the hard line, even though it's a small section, you wanna make sure you're not resting it or bending it in any way that it shouldn't be. So just keep that in mind. Now we can work on getting our bolts back into place. Again, you're gonna need an M16 triple square for these. I'm just gonna snug it into place quickly with the electric ratchet, but I'm not gonna tighten it down yet. Give myself some place so I can get that bottom bolt started. And same thing, gonna feed it through. Line up the hole and start it by hand. And again, I'm just gonna use an electric ratchet to speed it up a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna snug them down with the breaker bar and then we're gonna to torque these down to 133 foot pounds. Snug up the top one before we torque it down. All right. Now we're ready to torque these back down again. As you can saw it was a bit of a challenge to get them undone, and that's because we have to torque these down to 133 foot-pounds.
that's one. I'm gonna get ready to torque the top one. And you always want to make sure these sockets are all the way in. You don't want to strip these. Beautiful. And now with the caliper mounted back in, we can go ahead and reinstall our bracket with the 10 millimeter bolt. We're just gonna go ahead and snug this 10 mil down by hand. And then if you're gonna to torque it, you're gonna to wanna to torque it down to about seven foot pounds or 10 Newton meters. Depends on what side of the pond you're on. Now we have everything bolted back up. The last thing to do before we install our wheel again is to install our new wear pad sensor. So I always like to start with the outer one first. These can only go in one way, so it's pretty hard to mix them up. Sometimes I like to use a little flathead to push these in just to help them. Bam, baby. Now that we have our first one in, we can go ahead and feed our line through that holder and install the inboard one. Then using a flathead just to help push it all the way through. Then we can feed our wire through the notch cut out in the caliper, just like so. And then go ahead and reconnect it back into our electrical plug. And boom, baby. That's that. Now with everything buttoned up over here, we can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall our wheel back on and torque it down to about 90 to 96 foot pounds. Last thing we're going to do before we wrap this up is head back to the front of the vehicle and put the cap back on our master cylinder and check our fluid level and adjust it if need be. Back here you can see that our fluid level is at the max, so we're going to leave it for now as we will be flushing this later on in another DIY. So I'm just going to thread my cap back on. Make sure this is facing the right direction for the plug. And then put our electrical connector back on. From there, our cowl piece can go back on and we can wrap up this DIY. And there you have it, my good people, another DIY in the books. As you can see, overall, a pretty straightforward job on this 957. Again, the process is gonna be similar on most of your Cayennes out there. And again, if you buy the brakes from us, you can drive worry-free as you'll know that you'll be able to warranty them whether you wanna do them every 10, 20, or 30 maybe even 40,000 miles if you're lucky. If you guys like what you saw in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, please be sure to leave those in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.